empowerment a little bit tonight. Yeah, I'll say a little bit for real, I am. And, um, you know, I don't know what it is about this subject that really hits home with me and really makes me kind of go, ooh, I don't know if I should say that or not. I'm usually, I'm usually in the preaching area, uh, I don't really care. Um, and, and so I, I say I don't really care. Um, it doesn't really bother me to say what God has laid on my heart, but sometimes when when I'm speaking about this subject, it kind of gives me pause. And I, I don't ever want to be offensive. I want to be effective. Uh, I don't ever want to be a, annoying. I want to be anointed. Amen? I, I, don't, I want you to catch what I'm, I'll catch what I'm throwing at you, okay? I, I want you to not think I'm... Uh, here's my fear. I, I don't want you to think I'm preaching right to you, but if you're hearing it, if the shoe fits, baby, wear it, Cinderella. And so, just let you know, okay? And so, just let you know, uh, it's not... I didn't go... I didn't go, hey, David really needs that because he won't sit down and he's talking to Dean right now. And so, I, I, I just, I just, I just, but uh, uh, I didn't say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to construct this for Naomi. No. Uh, but, if, if, but if Naomi needs to hear it, then, then she needs to hear it. If I need to hear it, then I need to hear it. And when I put this together, uh, it really changed the way I looked at some things that I, in my life. And so I hope that you guys get something out of it. I hope you got something out of the last two. Um, that were the spirit of entitlement, where it was Noah, and also for, uh, um, yeah, that one, Jeff said, Jeremy, and I can remember the uh, And so, um, you guys remember those. I hope that we got something out of those, uh, because sometimes we get entitled to things that we're not entitled to. We feel like we're entitled to them, and even though we're not. But the, I'm going to finish up today with the church, and uh, finish up with the uh, spirit of entitlement in the church. And uh, what, do we, what do I mean by that? I'll just give you a couple of definitions. We call ourselves the church. We call ourselves God's people. We call ourselves the bride of Christ, chosen, anointed, rapture ready, looking for his coming. We're called out, peculiar people. That's only when we do weird stuff. We say, well, we're peculiar people. I don't know what that means, but it's okay. All right. And uh, his assembly, we call ourselves the church of God. All those things we call ourselves, the church, we call ourselves the church. How many have ever called yourself a part of the church? Okay. How many have ever called yourself God's people? I've, 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 I've done that. How many have ever called yourself the bride of Christ? I've called myself the bride of Christ. How many have ever heard a message preached that many are, many are called but few are chosen and you feel like you're the chosen? Amen. How many have ever called yourself the call? Amen. Because I'm called and I'm chosen. How many have ever been anointed? You feel like you're anointed to do something? Amen. Uh, so we've all used this. How many are rapture ready? Rapture drill. Praise the Lord. Y'all got left. All right. Get out. Good. Good. And so, uh, are you you're rapture ready? How many are looking for his coming? Yes. 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 Okay. And so, um, how many are, how many, how many feel like you're called out to do something great for God, to do something different? Yes. I, I feel like we are. How many ever, ever thought of yourself as a peculiar person? <laughs> Only when you do something weird, right? Peculiar people. <laughs> you, how many of you call, call yourself the assembly? Some of us call or I'm in the assembly of God. How many of you call yourself a part of the church of God? I'm not Pentecostal the church of God. I'm talking about the church of God in the Bible. Okay. okay. These all describe the group of people you're sitting with today. Every word that I just spoke, every phrase, every sentence I just wrote, uh, read to you and I wrote down describes you. You are God's people. You are God's chosen. You are God's call. You're part of His church. You are the bride of Christ. You, you, you are rapture ready. I hope if you're saved, you're rapture ready, right? I hope. I am called out. I, I am part of His assembly. I am part of the church of God. I, I am I am anointed. I, I am the... I am the thing. I, I am the thing. I, I, whatever. Okay, okay. And so, the, the children of God how many of you ever called yourself a child of God? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm a child of God. I'm a son of God. I'm not the son, but I'm a son. Yes. I can't. I can't be Jesus, but I can be Jeff. Yes. That's right. Right? Sure, baby. Come on. What's wrong? Are you sick? Come on. I need some guys to come up and pray. We'll come to you, baby. Let me pray. Let me have that name. Oh, okay. That's right. Father, I should touch right now. The healing come to his body. Fever, we, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. The healing come to him in the name of Jesus. 
touching right now the top of his head about this team, Father, they've been holding well. We curse sickness. We ask you to move right now in the name of Jesus upon a healing to come to him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, you see, my wife has a new boyfriend. Right there. <laughs> so I can't sit by her. You got somebody sitting by her. All right. Amen. We're just praying for Hagen to be well. Amen. And uh, Dan, don't ever worry about that. You're not ever bothering me. Okay. Um, we call ourselves the children. I'm a child of God. I'm a son of God. I'm not the son, but I am a son. I can't be Jesus, but I can be Jeff. I can be who he. I can be who he's called me to be. I wasn't called to be Messiah. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. So I, I, can't, I don't do well with people spitting on me. I can't. I don't do well with that. I don't do well with people lying and, on me and punching me in the face and hitting me with stuff. I don't do well with that. So thank God I wasn't called to be Messiah, man, but I was called to be His son. I was called to be a son of God. But you never, we, the title we never use, and we never use this title, we never call ourselves the entitled of God. We never call ourselves... Well, I'm the entitled of God. But all of us kind of feel that way at times. Now, I'm going to preach today, okay? Amen. I'm going to preach today. And I'm not trying to be offensive in any way, shape, or form. I just, I just want to be real with you. I, I testified last uh, Sunday about my life and how when I was a teenager and I played drugs here, and, um, uh, I, uh, I felt entitled because I was Jeff. Don't you know who I am? Jeff Nance. I, I grew up here. Don't you know? Don't you recognize me? I, I, I can't, you know, I, I'm the best drummer in the whole place. Come on now. I'll just, come on. Don't you know me? And so, and so I felt that way. I mean, I'm not going to lie about it. I'm not going to lie about it. And I know that you did with your little halos crooked on your horns, but I did. And that's okay. I can preach to me and not get mad one bit. I'm going to preach to me a little bit today. I felt, I, I get that testimony last Sunday about how, how I, could, I could go out and live, live crazy and then come to church and I go right straight up on the platform of the drums. Never thought anything about it because that's my spot, that's my job, that's what I'm, that's where I'm entitled to that. But I, really, was I? Or was I just allowed to feel that way? I don't want to feel, I don't want any of you to feel like you're not special because you are. I don't want any of you to feel like you're, you're not important because you are. I don't want any of you sitting here today to, to, to feel like you're not, not called of God because you are. But I want to try to get into your spirit today that we're not entitled to anything. Especially if our lifestyle doesn't lead up, to, doesn't match up to God's standard. How can we lead people when we can't lead ourselves? And I know, I'm not saying we, we, we're not going to all fall short and do something stupid. I'm not, I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying we're all not going to do some, some crazy something or other. But I'm talking about a lifestyle. A lifestyle that is different than what God's Word says. I know that I, I, I've changed a little bit in my preaching. And I hope that, you, that doesn't offend you, but it, it, I want God's glory in the house. I, I don't, I, I'm tired of trying to figure out how to make you come to church. Come on, come on. I know that sounds weird and that sounds bad. I'm the preacher and I'm supposed to say that. But if you go, if you can't come to church because you love God, then I, what I say doesn't matter anyway. I'm not trying to manipulate you to get you to trick you to come to church. I, I need I, I want you here. But what if you come here or not, it's not gonna affect one thing that I do. I'm gonna preach the same way whether you're here or not. And I love you and I want you to be here. Everybody that's here, thank God for you. I appreciate you being here today. That it, it just still fascinates me that people show up and I'm the preacher. It's just, and it really, it just, it just, it does. It's very humbling. But this morning, I just want to talk to you for just a little bit that about we never call ourselves the entitled of God, but our lifestyle says otherwise. Because there's some things in our life we never change. Because that's just the way I am. No, baby, that's not just the way you are. That's just the way you like to be. That's your default setting. When we hit reset on you, you go back to that. 
And you need to change some things in our lives. We need to realize who we are in Christ. And we need to realize who it is that God has called us to be. And, and, and church, if I can't get this across to you, then I failed. But we as a church body have to come together and be a church body and not separate entities of a body. With me? It's not just about remnant and then everybody else. I feel like I pastor three churches in one. I do. It's not about uh, the youth group and then remnant and then somebody else. That's not. It's, it's supposed to be a body of Christ coming together to do great things for God. And then until we can get that into our spirits and realize who it is that we are, see, we aren't entitled for God to move in our services at all. We're not entitled for God to even show up. Just because we can, we say we're going to meet here at, at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning and we're going to sing some songs and we're going to Sunday school class and, and then we come out of Sunday school class and we're going to sing some, a couple of more songs and we're going, to, we're going to give our tithe and our offering to God and we're going to do all that stuff and then, then Jeff's going to get here and yell at me for 40 minutes and, okay, 45. And so then, and then we're going to, and then after that, we're going, to, we're going to go home and we're going to eat and we're going to come back at 6. Just because we do that doesn't mean that God is in kind or entitled to us to, to show up. But if we don't do what God has called us to do and we don't come together and we don't begin to pray for the glory of God to fall in this house, there, there's going to be some situations in our life, listen, that we're going to have to come against that you're going to need more than what I preach to you. Okay. But you, I hear somebody say, but, but I'm me. I'm me. We were at the athletic banquet last year, and uh, and uh, Coach Kim was talking about Destiny Tiger. And some of y'all know who Destiny is, and I love Destiny. Um, she's just a goofy kid. But anyway, I love, I love Destiny very much. And uh, he said that she would say, but Coach, I'm DT. <laughs> Destiny Tiger, you get it? Okay. And so some of you sit back there and say, but God, it's me. It's me. But God, don't you understand? You're talking to me. Look at all the stuff I've done for you, God. Look at all the things I've done. God, don't you understand? It's me. Me. I'm a lover of God's blessings. How many love God's blessings? Woo! Love it. Amen. I get somebody almost to spin right there, didn't I? Almost, somebody almost got to spin right there. The lover of God's blessings. How many love God's favor on your life? It's great, isn't it, that you make good decisions and, and God gives you opportunities to make great decisions, to do greater things. And isn't that cool to have the favor of God on your life to where you're blessed and you know you're blessed and it's just great? Isn't that cool? Yeah. I love that. I'm a lover of God's grace because I'm stupid sometimes. Amen. I know you're not, but I'm talking to me. I'm a lover of God's grace and how, how he doesn't just kill me because I'm stupid, okay? He doesn't just say, I, I knew it. I, I knew he was going to do it. I knew it. I knew it. I, I'm, I'm a lover of God's grace because God's grace is what? Sufficient. Thank you, Christians. His grace is, sufi is sufficient. His grace is enough. Okay? And so uh, we never sing, we never sing his, his judgment is enough. His judgment is enough. No, we don't. No, huh? That doesn't go well. That doesn't just fit, okay? We don't, it doesn't fit right there in the stanza. We can't do that. And so we, we, don't, we don't talk about his holiness. Is enough. His righteousness is enough. We're talking about me, though, God. We're, we're talking about me. I'm at church every time the doors are open, God. I give the offerings. I bless your house. I do all these things. Me, God, me. Aren't I entitled to something? Haven't I gained some points somehow? Mm. Me. Of His holiness, sometimes I'm not a fan. Me. Sometimes it's hard. Oh, I don't believe that, brother. It is. Don't you wish sometimes you could just tell people what you really think? Amen. Not go, not the Holy Ghost goes, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up. Shut, up. shut your mouth now. Yeah. Wouldn't it be cool just to be able to just go off on people and walk away like you don't care? And, eh, probably not. Probably not. Because then you feel bad later. 
I heard, you know, I heard a preacher say this one time. I, well, I gave them, I, I, I God just gave them my mind, baby. Listen, you can't spare it, okay? And so, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Holiness, I looked it up. It says dedicated to righteous use. Are you dedicated to righteous use? Has God has God given hold of your life and God dedicated you to the right the righteous use of His and I've got righteous acting in a just and upright manner. Ooh, oh, you better have to act in a just and upright manner. You mean I can't just live like hell and go to heaven? No, maybe you can't. I can't just live like I want to. No, you can't. You live like He wants you to, and you do what He says. And not what everybody else says. I have to live it. Church, we have to live what God has called us to be. It's not enough to come to church and it's wonderful that you're here. It's not enough to be part of whatever team you're part of. It's not, it's not enough to lead whatever it is that you're leading. It's not enough to give whatever it is that you give. Can I just... Put your mind at ease. I have no idea what anybody gives in this church. I have no idea. I I have no access. I have access to it, but I, I choose not to have access to what anybody gives because I figure that's between you and God, and God will take care of me. Amen. Amen. I, I don't look at the tithe record and say, "Well, yeah, mark them off the list." Mark. I don't. I don't do that. I don't look to see if you gave five dollars or five hundred dollars. I don't care. That's between you and God, and God has always taken care of us, and God has always taken uh, great care of this building and the people in this, and God has always done it. And so just I want to put your mind at ease. I don't have any idea what you give, or if you give, and if you don't give. I can tell by your lifestyle whether you do. I can tell by the blessings of God on your life whether you do. I have a pretty good hunch. Huh. I'll go on. Because I have to not only say it, but I have to live it. When we were at, at Brother Ford's funeral, and I think I said this last week, when we were at Brother Ford's funeral last week, uh, they said he not only preached it, but he lived it. And my God, I hope that someone can say that about me. But God, what about me? But God, what about me? Listen, I'm at church today. Thank God you're at church today. Give yourself a hand for being at church this morning. Come on, man. I you didn't have to be at church this morning. You can still be asleep getting ready for football to kick off in 13 minutes. <laughs> You can set your alarm for 11.55 that gives you enough time to get something to drink on the restroom and sit down and get, turn the TV on. You could have done that if you didn't want to. But what did you do? You came to church today. And yes, that means something to God. I believe it means something to God. That you're faithful to be in the house of God. I believe that means something to Him. I was here. I'm here every service. I was here every service this week, God. Some of you have been here every service this week. Some of you haven't seen this last week. That's okay. Okay, just... Boo, you do you, okay? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna just kill you because you're not at church every time the door broke. Sometimes that, some things things happen. Listen, but Brother Jeff, you don't understand. God, you don't understand. I worked in the youth this week. I gave up all my church time to be here this week. I gave it all of my sacrifices. But but God, me? Yes, you. You still can't be entitled to anything. Even though God sees you, even though God sees what you do, and He's very thankful for that. You know, I love it. The scripture says that to not let people see what you do is to be rewarded in private. Amen? You don't have to blow a trumpet, put ashes on your head, put sackcloth on and tell somebody that you're fasting. Oh, I can't, I can't go with you today, brother. I'm fasting. <laughs> Eh, okay. And I, I understand. I've been, I've been pushing that corner before. I know some of you guys have been, have been pushing the corner where you don't, you finally just have to say, listen, I'm, I'm fasting. I, I can't. I, I mean, I mean you, you, but you didn't blow a trumpet and try to tell somebody how wonderful you were for fasting. But I've been pushing that corner before and say, listen, can I just take a rain check? Because I, I can't eat today. I, I, I'll, I'll go with you tomorrow. And I know some of you, I know exactly what I'm talking about. Listen, some, some of you say, I missed most of my church time this, this week, God, because I was serving. And yes, God, I, listen, I wish to God I'd get everybody in here to serve. Amen. It'll change your outlook of church if you, if you get busy serving and not be served. If you get busy handing out water, 
you'll get busy, if you'll get busy greeting out the door, if you'll get busy uh, making uh, uh, biscuits and gravy, and, and, and you'll get busy uh, handing out hot dogs, if you'll get busy, um, I don't know, doing whatever we need to do around right here, uh, sweeping up grass, or, or painting poles, or whatever it is that we need they need done around here. If you'll get busy serving your, your church body, it'll change your outlook of what, what church is all about. See, church to me is not come in and leave. Church to me is, is, is it's a day of work. It's a day of serving. It's a day of, of doing something. It's not because I'm the pastor. It was, that, it was like that before I was ever pastor, but I was just Jeff in a pew. It was serving. What can I do? What can I do to help? How can I help? When you get busy serving, what happens is this. Your whole outlook for the people that you serve changes. Yeah. You can't be mad at DeAndre when you serve DeAndre. I guess you can, but still. It changes, it changes your outlook of who DeAndre is. You get to know him a little bit. I can't be mad at David and Lisa if I serve David and Lisa. I can't be mad at Dean if I serve Dean. I guess you can if you want to be, but, but it changes your perspective of who they are. Get busy serving. Boy, that went over great. Man, I, well, I had a smooth sailor right there. I've got a live church on Monday sometimes. Because I like to get preached to it as well. But Shawnee, because Tyler's over there, and I love Tyler. And, and uh, so... I go over there and hang out every so often and and uh, and I walk in and it's just amazing to see all these different people serving together. It's amazing. I went in uh, the last uh, three weeks ago, I think three weeks ago I went. I'm not a very good church member there. And so I went three weeks ago and uh, and there were people in the sanctuary from the age of 18 to 81. It was crazy. Now the other people were in the back because the music was too loud. They were in the back, and then I got back to some walls. There's walkers, wheelchairs, and canes, and all kinds of stuff, and they're sitting there, and they're just enjoying the snot out of service. Right. And I'm sitting in the back. I'm sitting in the sound booth with Tyler, and I'm just, I'm, I'm just watching this going. This is crazy. It's a Monday night. 500 people in service on a Monday night, or 300 people, 300 something people, whatever. You couldn't find a parking space. It was nuts. Yeah. And there was, check this out now, don't be offended. There was black folks and white folks and brown folks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that's crazy talk. <laughs> I know that's crazy talk. And they were all serving together. It was nuts. This isn't real. This is this is fake church. No, it was real. It was awesome. It was good. And Craig preached one of the best days I've ever heard Craig preach. Because he was talking about his daughter having an illness. And God, God, why won't you kill my daughter? And, and he was talking about something. It was great. He did, did a fantastic job. Did a fantastic job. I said all that to say this. I'm not trying to get you to the live church. I'm trying to get you to say this. I said a, this, this point. Just because you serve doesn't give you the right to feel entitled Amen. to things. Amen. It amazes me when people serve, they automatically feel like um, that's mine. That's mine. No, baby, it's God's. It's God's. And he's allowing us to sit there and serve. And so in the church sometimes we get to feel entitled. But this is, I'm, I'm trying to wrap up. Give me, a, give me nine minutes and I'll quit. Listen, me, God, God, I'm not entitled. How many of you ever felt this when I've said this? I'm just blessed. <laughs> Some of y'all have already, have already said that in your spirit. When I started speak, doing this series. I'm not entitled. I'm just blessed. No. Are you? Are you? Mm. I'm not entitled. I just, I just have, God just gives me things. Great, that's great. How about this? Let the blessings be delayed. And let's see your praise. Come on, pray. Amen. Let the blessings stop coming for a minute. And I want to see if your hand's in the air and tears are still rolling down your cheeks. Amen. 
Let, let, let God delay a blessing and let me let, let God uh, do something that you don't think God ought to do. And let me see if the tears are still rolling and the hands are still in the air and there's still a Chevrolet or a ding dong in your in your in your voice. Amen. Come on. Amen. Let me let me see if, if, if that if that happens. Let me see your praise. Because if I can see your praise, I'll know where your heart's at. Because if your heart's just in the stuff that you feel like you're entitled to, when it gets cut off, you'll be gone. You won't walk when it gets hard. You'll just you'll dry up and just blow away. Because you won't be able to handle it. You won't be able to stand if the blessings aren't coming. Because sometimes when the blessings stop, we really see what you're made out of. When you're really having to struggle. I'm, I'm not talking about struggle financially. I'm talking about you're just trying to struggle not to backslide. Come on, you're you're just trying to struggle not to just quit church altogether because that, I, that they just don't understand me. They don't get me. I'm a, I'm going to go somewhere where they get me. Baby, that's okay because they're not going to get you either because it's not about them. It's about you. You have something broken inside of you. You need to fix it, and hopefully they can fix it for you. But let the blessings be delayed. Let me see your praise. Let me see your attitude when you're not getting everything from God you think you need. Let me see your attitude. Let me see your attendance in God's house when God delays. Mm. Preach on. That's right. So thank you. Says Paul. I like it when it gets quiet because that means I'm doing right. <laughs> me, God, I'm not entitled. I just know God. Really? You know that God still deals with sinful men and women? Amen. Still deals with them. What do you mean by he deals with them? He doesn't put up with it. Well, he does for a little bit because he has grace. But he doesn't put up with sin constantly in your life. He doesn't cut your lifestyle of sin. God will deal with that. You want blessings to stop in your life? Continue to sin in, in your life in that area. You want, you want hard times to struggle? Continue to sin in that area. And quit acting like God doesn't know anything about it. But just because I don't know about it doesn't mean God doesn't know about it. And you've hit it and you've, you've stuck it and you've had hard feelings about people for 15 years and you still feel like you're entitled to be whatever it is you want to be. And God's like, hmm. I ask you, Ezekiel 13, you have it for me? Would you read uh, 1 through 16? I know it's a lot of reading. Ezekiel chapter 1, I'm sorry, chapter 13, verses 1 through 16. And what, uh, you can read it, and uh, what do you have in it? Let's do New King James. Let's do that. Yes, 1 through 16, please. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who prophesy, and say to those who prophesy of their own heart, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, your prophets are like foxes in the deserts. You have not gone up into the gaps to build a wall for the house of Israel to stand in battle on the day of the Lord. They have envisioned futility and false divination, saying, Thus says the Lord, but the Lord has not sent them. Stop right there. They have prophesied and said, God said this, and God said, I never said that. They said, Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt go forth and doeth this. And God said, I didn't say that. And He's going to deal with that. Keep going on. Come on. Yet they hope that their word may be confirmed. Have you not seen the futile vision? And have you not spoken false divination? You say, The Lord says that I have not spoken. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, because you have spoken nonsense, and envisioned lies, therefore I am indeed against you, says the Lord God. My hand will be against the prophets who envision futility and who divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, nor be written in the record of the house of Israel, nor shall they enter into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord God, because indeed, because they have seduced my people, saying, Peace, when there is no peace. And one builds a wall, and they plaster it with untempered mortar. Say to those who plaster it with untempered mortar that it will fall. There will be flooding rain, and you, O great hailstones, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall tear it down. Surely when the wall has fallen, will it not be said to you, Where is the mortar with which you plastered it? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will cause a stormy wind to break forth in my fury, 
and there shall be a flooding rain in my anger, and great hailstones and fury to consume it. So I will break down the wall you have plastered with untempered border, and bring it down to the ground, so that its foundation will be uncovered. It will fall, and you shall be consumed in the midst of it. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Thus will I accomplish my wrath on the wall and on those who have plastered it with the untempered mortar, and will say to you, The wall is no more, nor those who plastered it. That is, the prophets of Israel who prophesy concerning Jerusalem and who see visions of peace for her when there is no peace, says the Lord God. Thank you, brother. Listen, I know that the prophet's talking to Israel. I get it, but this is Israel's spiritual church. Okay? I understand this. You say, I know God. And God said, but it goes contrary to what God said. God will deal with that. When you say God understands why I don't, and it goes contrary to what God's word says, God understands, yes, that it's sin and must be dealt with. There's things in our lives we have to deal with. And, and he said that you have prophesied. I'm going to read it. Go back to where I was at. You have prophesied and said, thus saith the Lord. And the Lord said, I have not said these things. And so now I am turned against you. Right. With me? I thought God would never leave me nor forsake me. He will not leave me nor will he forsake you. That's true. It's true. But there are some things in our lives that we must deal with. And if we don't deal with those issues, our lives become a jumbled mess that we expect God just to clean up. And God's like, baby, listen, I told you the word and I asked you to preach the word and preach the word and do the word. And you heard me preach it. You heard it. You know what to do. Do it. But we feel so entitled that God's just going to come in and wipe away everything that we have done without us doing anything to do to fix it. We have to go to Him. The women He also preached, He also spoke against, but I'm running out of time. Listen. But me, God, yes, entitled people, well, listen, entitled people know that God has what they need. You with me? Even if you're entitled, you feel like you have a spirit of entitlement. We, we know, look, and I can just talk to me, when I, I knew that God had what I needed. Amen. I knew to run to Him because He had my provision. Come on, help me a minute. And listen, it gets better in the next couple minutes. I knew to run to Him because I knew that He would fix me. But I had to go to Him. I had to be fixed by Him. And I had to repent. And I had to change what my attitude was toward Him. And he fixed me. I didn't fix me. I'm still not fixed completely. I'm still broken. I still got scars that look like Grand Canyon. I still have bumps and bruises and warts and hair going out of uh, stuff. I got, man, I got it. I understand that. But I, but I knew where to run to. And he came and he fixed me. Listen, in time of it, we know where that God gives us provision. We know how to run to him. And we also know this, that He loves us through our crazy. Amen. Amen. Even when you're crazy, He loves you through your crazy. He loves you no matter what's going on in your life. He still loves you. So listen, when I said, when I had Brother Dean read Ezekiel, I wanted to get this point. He's against those who say, God said this and God never said it. So if you want to be one of those people that say, thus saith the Lord or God told me, you better make sure it was thus saith the Lord and God told me. And it better not be contrary to what God's word is in that Bible, right? Mm. This is what we do. And I'm, I'm wrapping up. This is what we do. We repent and we move forward. Amen. We repent and we move forward. You never stop moving forward. If you ever stop moving forward, you start sliding back. Don't let don't let yourself get caught in that trap of I'm just going to stop. I don't even care. I'm just going to stop. I'm going to stop right here because God doesn't care anyway. That's a lie of the devil. God does care. God does care about you greatly. He does care about everything in your life. But you have to keep walking. You can't sit down. You have to keep walking. 
You can't stop going forward. You have to keep walking. You have to, even when you don't feel like it, even if you've got to drag your leg, then you've got to keep walking. you got to keep going forward. Because if you ever stop, the devil will pick you off because you'll get behind. And he picks off the weak and the lame. And next thing you know, the next thing you know, you're mad at God because God did do something for you. God didn't pay a bill for you. God didn't make it. Did God buy the car or did you buy it? Did God get you the newest iPhone or did you buy it? Preach on, preacher! Did God get you the Discover car, the, the Home Depot car, the Lowe's car, the Sears car, the whatever car that you can't pay right now, the Target car, whatever it is, whatever it's called. Did God do that? Or did you do that? And now you want God to clean it up. You want God to clean it up. See, you can't get mad at God when you make a mess. Now, will God bless you and help you get out of it? Yeah. You know, it's called a J-O-B. Yes. It's called multiples if you need it. 24 hours in a day, you can work more than eight. Yes. But I ain't working more than eight. Stay in poverty, I don't care. It's up to you. It's up to you. I can sleep six. I can work 18. I got it. I got this. If I get myself in a mess, God can get me out. He's going to rain manna down. He ain't going to put it in the house. I got to go get it. <laughs> get it. I got to prepare it and I got to go get it twice on Saturday. <laughs> and so I got to go get it. Is that okay? Y'all all right? All right. I, had, I didn't mean to cuss and say work. And that's how, oh, sorry. I did again. All right. I'm sorry. It's a four-letter word. So listen. Listen. Said all that. Say this. Church, I hope out of this little series, I've been wanting to preach it for years and I finally got this. I had to get myself in the right frame of mind to preach it. And uh, because when I think about it, it makes me mad. And so I, I had to get myself to where I could preach it, not, not preach it mad. Does that make sense? Because we have several people that have gone to church here for a long time that feel entitled to a lot of things that really we're not entitled to. We're blessed, of course. We have favor, of course. We have power, of course. Are we called? Yes, of course. Are we chosen? Of course. We are. But guys, if we don't do something about our attitudes and the way we see what God's doing in our lives, we'll never make it past this. And I've got to get out of this 30 by 40, man. i got to. I can't. It, I feel like I'm claustrophobic almost. I just... just we've got to move forward. We've got to go forward. We can't, we can't hang on to the things that we held on to, to the Turner regime and the, and the, and the, and the Ford ministry and the, and the Turner ministries and the Civil Jets and the Lord, uh, ministries. And we can't stay back there. I'm not them. I love them. Don't want to be them. I love them. And we can't continue to hold on to those things. Or I've been doing this since Brother Ford. Well, Brother Ford has now passed away and he's left here in 1980. You know how long that's been? Most of us didn't have kids then. And our kids are grown. Brother Turner's been gone for seven years as pastor here. It's time to move forward. Last story, I'll leave you alone. Sister Ruby Ferris. I mean, no, Ruby Ferris. She used to live two houses up the street up here. Three houses. Where the cellar is, that was her house. She called Brother Turner one time and just, oh, you're going to hell. He's like, why am I going to hell? Because you are moving some walls back there, and that's where God told Brother Ford to put them. And he, was, he was going straight to hell for moving walls. And he... Well, I'm not Brother Ford. 
God didn't tell me I couldn't move them and hung up. <laughs> Same things. Same things. Guys, I'm not Brother Ford. I'm not Harold Turner. I'm not Brother Levis. Jeff. Pastor Jeff Nance. Yes. That's who I am. And we gotta move forward. That's it. Nice to meet you guys. Pastor Jeff. We have to move forward. Amen. God really did a work on me because I had to deal with <laughs> Listen, sorry, I, just, I got a glimpse of something. Else. God really had to work on me. And I had to get this out of my spirit. Because honestly, sometimes it still tries to creep up. And I have to put it back down. Sometimes that, that spirit of, well, I'm just, 